We've tried everything, okay? We did. We did the body positivity movement. We did the <laughs> HAES. We did like all these things. F your beauty standards. Oh my God, we, we were activists for 10 years. We tried, it's over, give up. <laughs> We already tried that way. How come we're not trying the other way? Okay. And honestly, I don't know. I don't know the solution. Okay. I just know what worked for me. When you are awake and making your movements rooted in reality and being market driven, you just do better for yourself. The less time we spend be being awake is being market driven. Capitalism in this woman's veins, being bro. Being miserable and being angry. And the more time we get paid and profiting from whatever systems we this woman is such a capitalist. I love it. Live in. If a lot of women individually win, wouldn't that be a win for womanhood, period? I don't know. Just something to think about. A lot of the women who already have existing capital and status, you can afford to not cater to the beauty myth. It's so true. And I love that for them. But for women who do not have existing capital and status, we don't get the privilege of not catering. Hey, 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 hey. I beg to differ, my bros. Bro, 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 bros, bros. Ugly women be popping off. We're doing fine. No, oh my God, this is so fun. Is this a joke? She's fucking with us. She's trying to sell merch, bro. We just got bamboozled. We just got hoodwinked. We just got yo-yoed. We just got tricked. She popped one bubble and was like, I'm awakened, I know, buy my merch. This was beautiful. P.S. Buy my merch. Links in the chat. Thank you. We're going to move into the Menosphere bubble again. And I think uh, we should have fun doing it. This is a video you guys sent me on the Discord. This video is from Menifestel. And this is a mo uh, video called Men's Obsession with Calling Will Women Ugly. The Dark Truth. The Beauty Myth. Ooh. You're not a 10. All right. Ooh. I'm not saying that to be mean, but you're not a 10. A man's right to confer judgment on any woman's beauty while remaining himself unjudged is beyond scrutiny because it is thought of as God-given. That right has become so urgently important for male culture to exercise because it is the last unexamined right remaining intact from the old list of masculine privilege. Those that it was universally believed that God or nature or another absolute authority bestowed upon all men to exert over all women. As such, it is daily exercised more harshly in compensation for other rights over women and the other ways to control them now lost forever we learn to be pretty catering to the beauty myth but in a capitalistic catering only to men with resources type of way that's why we all try to avoid being broke man bait that's why we are obsessed with old money aesthetic to be um who is this we <laughs> This is not my bubble. Who is this we? Classy being elegant. We are turning the beauty myth around to benefit ourselves instead of being a slave to it. Hey, bestie. Welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group podcast where we talk. No hate. Different bubble though. I have never been spoiled. Don't identify as a princess. Refuse to be seen as like a brat. Unless it's in a BDSM way, of course. But this is like a little... I'm uncomfortable now. We're a spoiled girly support group. This is branding wise, such a vibe. I know the aesthetic, but yet I don't know who would identify with this. Very interesting. Does anyone in my audience identify with the spoiled girly concept? Because that makes me want to, it makes my skin crawl a little bit. I think I'm too much of a boy for this. Genuinely, I don't, I don't love it, but okay, let's try not to prejudge. Let's see. We're gay judging. We're Talk just gay about judging. How to get that bag while also securing your own bag. I'm your host, Elle, and let's get into it. On today's episode, we are talking about men's obsession with calling women ugly and the sinister truth behind this phenomenon. Now, you will mm -hmm. want to be mad when you're watching this video, mm -hmm. but bestie, what do we say? Don't get mad get paid. With that being said, let's get into it. Let me play you a clip that started this whole video for me. I'm gonna be honest with you. You're not a 10. All right. Ooh. I'm not saying that to be mean, but you're not a 10. Okay. It's only fair, right? You okay, so I've seen this video. It's the whatever podcast trash. Listen to me when I say this. Coinciding with today's podcast, if you guys have not seen it, you're not ugly. You're just not introspective. Say it with me. You're not ugly. You're just not introspective. This is very key because listen to me when I say this. There are many ways to observe what is ugly and what is not ugly. Okay, I'm going to link the podcast in the chat so you guys can watch it. You need to watch this podcast, bros. My best 27 minutes of your life. Watch this podcast, okay? Okay, you're not ugly. You're just not introspective. And I mean this in two ways. Just like with Aang. 
When the guru says to let go of Katara, he's not saying dump the bitch and never marry her. He's saying let go of your attachment. When I say you're not ugly, I'm saying let go of your attachment to ugly. Let go of it. Look at this average man trying to tell this woman she's not a 10. In two ways, well, in one way he is right and in another way he is wrong. Yes, she's not a 10 on a scale of like 1 to 10 beauty. Like no offense, standing next to Megan Fox, like we're all going to look like trolls, okay? Megan is gorgeous. Like, like her a hater, not the biggest fan. She's literally beautiful. And being next to her should make you feel like a frog. And at the same time, if you let go of the attachment of ugliness, who cares if you're standing next to Megan Fox? We're all beautiful. Because we have the dignity of the human consciousness within us. We are literally beautiful because we are individual and we are conscious and we are here and we are connecting. But next to Megan Fox, I literally feel like a troll. And that's okay too. You you rated me. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna rate you. What did she rate him? But uh, I'll just say that you're not a 10. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't hurt me. <laughs> I'm not I'm not trying to hurt you. Are you down to revise your answer? If we got makeup remover. No, my makeup's expensive. Why would I wanna take it off? Uh, no. Is there a difference? <laughs> expensive. I'm not taking it off, Brian. Is there a difference in no. your rating? <laughs> with makeup without makeup no i told you brian it's all about confidence so i came across this video on tiktok and at first it was like oh okay you know it's just like something that guys do a lot like they always tell women that you're ugly you're not a 10 you're mid says the three all these ways to put women down and it's almost always based on appearance and i'm like why why is it and okay okay but like why do these women go on the whatever podcast right they want to make views. They want to boost their OnlyFans. Most women report when they go on the whatever or Fish and Fit podcast that their OnlyFans pops off. Honestly, I should go on there just to see how many people sign up for my OnlyFans. You know what I mean? I'd go as a mommy dom and I'd like go in high leather and make sure my tits are really out. You know what I mean? I just like I squash you with my boots and I bet all the bottom boys would sign up. God bless. I love you all. But listen to this. Like seriously, right? Why would you want a podcast that is only superficial and be like why are these boys making fun of our looks whatever and fresh and fit are two of the most superficial podcasts ever their whole shtick is superficial their whole shtick is superficial the whole thing and then you're going on a podcast and you're like um why are they rating us by our looks and i'm like um because they're literally a superficial podcast. That's what they do. Ma'am. Hey, it is true though that women also like to go after men for being broke. So I totally get that and uh, why that dynamic is because in the dating market- Which is ironic because the same women that aren't pretty enough to get men who will pay for them are the same women who won't make enough money to pay for a broke boy. I also have a podcast about that. Should you date a broke boy? You shouldn't date anybody who doesn't have a respectful relationship with their money or their body or their time. You shouldn't, if I'm going to make a prescription, I would say you shouldn't date anyone who doesn't have a respectful and conscientious relationship with their mind, body, and soul, bro. Okay? Marketplace. Women are more. Also, I would never go on Fresh and Fit or the whatever podcast. I literally would rather. Do you hear me? There is no actual investment there. There's zero investment there. It is the lowest of low content for the dumbest of dumb people, constantly pushing gender stereotypes and stereotypes about existence onto their audience and each other for clicks and baits from people that are too stupid to realize that they literally don't have to live this way. And frankly, if you fall for it, that's your bubble and that's what you get. And I want to be compassionate today, but I literally cannot meet complainers where they're at today. Zero complainers are getting my attention today. And the Whatever Podcast and Fresh and Fit and everyone who goes on it, complain, complain, complain. And the women who go on it complain that these boys are mean to them. Then why are you talking to them? If these boys are so mean to you, why are you talking to them? Why are you trying to get their attention? If you're so smart and you're so introspective, ladies, why are you, why are you talking to them? If you are the... Literally, I'm so sick of people. I do, I'm not meeting you where you're at in this regard, okay? I'm not. If you keep going on, no, no, no sympathy for self-inflicted wounds at this point. No, 
more heavily judged on their appearance and men are more heavily judged on their money. But that's not really the topic we're talking about today. The topic we're talking about is how in online discourse especially, even if you're not a content creator, you're just a consumer of content, you go on women's accounts and even if the people who are not content creators, they're the ones making these videos or posting pictures of them feeling themselves, you always get men in the comments who just say all these negative things. And True, men are negative Nancys on the internet. Men are complainers. These boys are complainers, except the boys in my audience. The men in my audience are wonderful. They're great. The guys in my audience are great. But I have a 60% audience of females. So, And then the non-binary people too. YouTube started telling us non-gender specific uh, analytics as well. It's like 2%. So I'm like, let's go. But literally... I have a majority female audience. I like it here. Boys who can handle a majority female audience, those are awesome dudes. Those are the dudes you want in your corner. The dudes that only want to be a male-dominated um, audience, YouTube audiences, audience like men who only watch men, men who do not believe women, those are not the men you want to interact with. You want to find men that are at least – well. In regards to being an online content creator, you definitely want to attract a female audience and the men who aren't afraid of being around women, right? Because these male-dominated audiences, like, they're a shithole and there's not even fun for the dudes. It's hard to be there. It's a rough environment, dude. It's a rough environment. You know what I mean? Well, I'm gay, so it's easy. Obviously, the gay boys are here as well. But I've got straight boys in my audience. i got straight guys. i got straight dudes. You know what I mean? Hi, dudes. I'm single. Ingrid is a peach, guys. If you're going to swoop anybody up in my audience, Ingrid's the one. <laughs> I'm like, why? And this phenomenon is so prevalent that there's even a trend on TikTok now about men's comments versus women's comments, where women's comments tend mm -hmm. to be very encouraging and praising the content. Yes, but remember, boys look at that and think you guys are all fluffing each other's egos up because they don't want that. Men are fighting this like obligation to be like tougher than thou, to pretend they're all in like Fight Club or the Mafia. They're like playing this role of pretending they're always strong while women are playing the game of pretending they're always pretty. And both of you are failing. Creator or just like being very uplifting and having that like supportive vibe in the comments. And then men go in the comments just to be negative. Back to that video that I just showed you, there's this really troubling trend of relatively attractive young women going on these podcasts and almost always their chosen profession is that within the s work realm a lot of them are of girlies okay and we've Let's already go. done an episode on of girlies so check that out if you're curious when i first saw these girlies on these male podcasts getting humiliated i'm like why like why would you go on these podcasts yes, to be humiliated why? until i found out that a lot of them are OF girlies and they use the podcasts as marketing. They're yeah. getting their bag. So I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So if you ever wondered why these women would go on these podcasts just to be humiliated, it's marketing, okay? They are getting their bag. Like they are using men's misogyny to stuff their pockets. And I love that for them. It's true. They I make mean, a lot of money. We're going to get to a point where a lot of us women as a collective will turn on S work as a whole, but we're not there yet we're not at that stage of awakening yet so whatever stage we're in we're gonna work with it baby steps i guess anyway back to the topic so if you ever wondered why these women would go on these podcasts to humiliate themselves that's why it's marketing and apparently women humiliating themselves see i think i'm too much of a man i can't do it i can't do it you know i'm like i can't i also think i'm like i maybe i'm just like new too neurodivergent or something but i could not handle a bunch of people yelling at each other over things that can't matter i can't do it. i can't bring myself to do it i'm like mm -mm. i'm too unattached i'm like no i don't need this i'm good like i think i'm too unattached i actually said that to my partner today i was like i think i'm too unattached it's making it really hard to like follow a brand because i'm just like eh, none of this is just mm. i couldn't i couldn't sit at that table could you even see me there i probably just not say much and i'm about i'd probably just make martial faces the whole time is good marketing yeah that says a lot about our current culture actually current male culture it brings me back to when margot robbie was this mentally unstable but very good looking and sexualized Let's character go. but the moment she plays barbie she's mid 
Why would she even play Barbie? She's mid. The moment she actually speaks to the girlies and dresses for the female gaze, all of a sudden, she's mid. Very curious, okay? So, you know what? We don't give the OF girlies enough credit for that, so... I don't think that these OF girlies on male podcasts, like, they're dumb because they're not dumb, okay? Anyway, however you feel about the OF girlies and the OF, the OF profession as a whole, we're not really here to pass judgment, but... Yeah, we're not. I certainly am not. Thank you for being open to sex work. Um, I don't know about you being too much of a man, but you have less fucks to give than any blue-collar man I've ever met. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm like gender fluid, so I hop between the two. That's really what's happening here. I switch it up. You would definitely say one word and trigger the panel. Wait, what would be the word? (laughs) I just feel like they'd be like, so what what level, like, uh, what do you think you are on a scale of one to 10? I'd be like, um, well, Abba for me, I'm pretty sure I'm a versatile six. So like you either are into me or you're not. I'm going to go off of that rating. Also, my husband thinks I'm hot and I think that's good enough. (laughs) Like, you know, but obviously like I'm obvious, you know what I mean? What would you say? And then they'd be like, a girl rated herself like but i'll be like but yeah like you like me or not like it is that's the problem is i don't think these girls say like you like me or not they either say like you know i'm like a four i'm like ugly or they say like i'm a 10 i'm hot i'm like just be realistic it's not that hard it's not that hard come on don't be dumb it's not that hard to know like where you are in a scale just okay megan fox and like give me another 10 is like naomi campbell is at the top okay i'll put megan as a 10 i'm sure we can find flaws but let's just say for the sake of this scale naomi campbell and megan fox are a 10 Who's in between that to get to the middle? And then who's at the bottom? Right? And I I could just look at the panel and be like, this one, this one, this one. Oh, yeah. Ethical slut. I would just say ethical slut. That's true. And they'd be like, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. That's true. Could I come in a human's got a human merch? Because that'd be kind of fire, though. I'd just show up in like a hoodie. They see they want the girls to probably have their tits out and look a certain way, too. You know what I mean? That's the problem is too much of it is branding. They literally are so desperate for these women. And look, I'm happy these women are making money. To be honest with you, that's awesome. Like, I love that. Like, make your money, girls. Because, but I just couldn't. Like, guys, I'm literally, I refuse to put myself in situations just to make money. Okay? There's a threshold. I just, I cannot be in a room. Like, I would just, unless I'm high, if I could be high, I would 100% go on the whatever or fresh and fit. If fresh and fit will let me be high, I will go on. But I don't think they do. I don't think they actually do. I think they make you come, you know, sober. You know what I mean? The sweats thing wouldn't get you on. Yeah. Can I show up in sweats? I totally go. Make a stamp and stamp your tit with humans going to human. Yeah. Tell them it's your party wear. True. This is how I got a husband in a hoodie and sweats. Let's go. I think you can get away with a hoodie on the whatever podcast. Okay, if I can be high, I'll go. Because genuinely, like, sober Brittany is just going to be like, I think they'd prefer me high. <laughs> Great. But that's why. That's why they go on these podcast episodes is because it's marketing. Back to the topic. Between the podcast clip and the men's comments versus women's comments trend on TikTok, men just love telling women that they are ugly, especially true. online. To be true, men also like telling each other they're ugly. Reminds me of all the times that I have been <gasps> on the- I would also die to see me and Joe Rogan smoke a joint together. Joe Rogan would love me, bro. Me and Rogan would get along so fucking well. We'd get along so fucking well. I'd be like, Rogan, listen to my levels. He'd be like, yeah, man. No, totally, bro. I'm like, I don't listen. We would sit there. We would vibe so hard over the levels. That's what I'm saying. Can I just get like, I need to get Joe Rogan's like, I would, we would have so much. Joe Rogan would fucking love my levels, bro. He would eat that shit up, bro. He would fucking love it receiving end Mm. of these physical appearance attacks like why are men so obsessed with calling women ugly especially women whose opinions they disagree with especially women who cater to the female gaze instead of the male gaze they really perceive women ignoring the male gaze as an attack on themselves on their manliness on their manhood and i think it's because when you grow okay manifest me going on joe rogan thank you guys for being so supportive listen to me okay We need to move my shit together. We need to get TikToks. We need to get likes. We need to get comments for the algorithm. We need to get this shit going. I'm going full anti-Britney until we get on Joe Rogan. No, listen, I think Rogan and I would just, we would have so much fun. There's no way we wouldn't fucking have fun. There's, because you know why? He engages with his, his guests. He literally hears them out, no matter how fucking crazy they are. And he goes, 
Let me hear that out, man. And it would be so fucking fun. It would just be so fun. It's fun engaging with people that are like genuinely like tell me about it. And let's talk about, oh, it would be so great. Up as a man. And you're conditioned to believe that all media is catered for you. All media is built off of the male gaze. Having media that does not cater to the male gaze is boring or maybe even threatening. And that's really why I think a lot of the men on Twitter especially turned on Margot because she stopped catering to the male gaze in her role as Barbie. As Barbie, she was catering to the female gaze and in a sense, ignoring the male gaze is very threatening to men. Anyway, as someone who has a lot of opinions that a lot of men disagree with, especially a lot of men online, because the men in my real life, the men that mm. I interact with on a very frequent basis, like the men in my life, whatever i say is basic i have been asked why I even oh this section is the reason my uh discord told me to watch this what she's gonna say bubble make this type of content because like doesn't everybody already know that but apparently people don't already know what i know okay so i'm growing the bubble that i live in so bubble. that a lot of us girlies can live in a very similar bubble where men are good men are not misogynistic and men actually want what's good for you because they want to create good partnerships with you they want to create a community like i don't know um i feel like they probably call women or call them ugly because they hate the idea of women having too high self-esteem because they themselves don't want to be locked looked down on or rejected i also think it's part of their negging uh tactic right they make fun of women get their self-esteem down and then they boot that's what i'm saying my dad looks at these men like they're pathetic like they're pathetic i honestly I'm kind of bummed that my dad didn't have more hands-on time with his youngest kids because I can tell that the younger boys who are like falling for Tate, that they didn't really like my dad leading by example wasn't enough, right? Like they needed to like understand the why and they don't understand that. Yeah. When you talk shit on women, you're like, oh, I don't like her. She's fucking fake and ugly. Yeah, that's true because your preference is allowed to say she's ugly, but also it's not true because everyone just has a preference. And also, you know, you don't have to be such a dick about it, bro, because that's just going to make women look at you and think like you're fucking ugly for no reason because you're short. Like what? You want women to start talking about your height? But that's the thing. So in my head, I asked my little brother because I was like, bro, I obviously like I'm Middle Eastern. So I think Middle Eastern men are attractive. So I was like, why? You probably get a bunch of girls. And he's like, Brittany, no girl has ever been into me. And I was like, that's not true. You just wanted to date a bit a minute ago. He's like, yeah, but like girls aren't really into me. Right. And I was like, OK, well, that's they're stupid, but like also they're young. Right. So even women fall for this trap of I need a guy who's tall. I need a guy who makes money. I need a guy who does this. And then men fall into the trap of not being able to live up to it or they do. And it's still not enough. Modern feminist girlies shouldn't be dating guys on whatever podcast. But at the same time, the guys on whatever podcast aren't going to get traditional girlies. I'm sorry, you're not. Why would a traditional girlie date a person on Fresh and Fit? You're not traditional. You know what I mean? And why would a feminist girl? So honestly, I feel like they're self-sabotaging in such a way I don't understand. How can these Metasphere podcasts not understand, like, who are the only women who are going to be into you? Gold diggers, princess pillow, pillow princesses, and people, like, who basically want you for your status. Okay. But not all women want all men for status. Right? A lot of women, wasn't the number one lecture men were giving women is that you're too into Disney and too into the fairy tale. You just want to fall in love. Literally, one of the biggest criticisms I heard growing up is like women are so into Disney and Disney tells women that they're going to be nice men who are going to fall in love with them. So what are you? I don't get it. Are you mad women want to fall in love? Are you mad women want your money? Are you mad? Like, I don't even know what you're mad about anymore. Are you even mad or are you just making money? Tell me this. Tell me how Fresh and Fit and the Whatever Podcast aren't doing the same thing the women with the OF accounts are doing. Getting on this podcast and making money off each other. Tell me they are not the same people. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me these sex workers aren't the same as these guys hosting this fucking podcast. Making money off each other. Tell me that they're not also grifting in their own way. Like these OF models are like, yeah, I'm going to go be humiliated for money. And these, OF, and these Whatever Podcasts and Fresh and Fit are like, yeah, I'm going to go talk down to women and make money. No, it's so bizarre how very basic standards such as wanting to be taken on a proper date, wanting a man to open the door, wanting a man to just be a good partner, period, is so threatening. Like, it really baffles me. But apparently, my bubble is not very common. I'm going to be a little self-aware here. You know what's really sad is when what I think is just basic and normal is such an outlier that I can build an online community around it because it is so rare, because it is such an outlier. The goal is 
for my reality and my vision to be the reality and vision for a lot of women especially the reality part because it's just sad back to the topic let me give you a few examples i wonder what she means by that because she hasn't explained exactly which bubble but like off online it's probably more rare but not really it depends on like if you're in super super normie bubbles like she has to understand she's not in a normie bubble because she's like reviewing whatever podcast clips like the normies, I would say, are more like Rhett and Link, who are very, very, very popular, right? Like, if you go very, 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 very into popular, like, YouTube content creators with, like, 30 million subscribers, are they even bothering to cover the whatever podcast? Isn't that super niche? Isn't the Menosphere and Red Pill super niche? Like, are normie content creators covering them? Even H3H3 isn't normie. I could not send Athens podcast to, like, anyone in my life. They wouldn't even know what it was. They wouldn't get it. But if I said Rhett and Link, I could send Rhett and Link to everybody in my life and everyone would want to watch them or understand them, right? Because they're very, very family-friendly. They're very basic. They're very clean. They're very digestible. You know what I mean? So even us here, like, yes, in our normal lives off the internet, of course people don't talk like us. But if you build it on the internet, then it's unique. But it's not a unique bubble off the internet to live in a place where people are normal and treat women with dignity. You know what I mean? It's only if you're obsessed with the internet culture do you take that into real life. Because if you just talk to people for people, like, it just depends, right? No, red pill is deaf, super niche. It definitely feels super. I assume it's super niche. That's why I, I laugh so hard when people are, um, I guess, saying like we're we're normal like we're the majority we're not we're like the weirdest part of the internet bros you know there's no way like if you're in this sphere like i don't know why anyone in the sphere thinks they're normal or know what normal people are doing you know how i reference what normal people are doing i ask everybody else in my life because i'm the weirdo i know i'm the weirdo in my groups and all the people in this like sphere are also the weirdos in their groups they all don't have friends. They are all chronically online. And we literally all form our friendships on the internet. What are we talking about here? Examples of men being NPCs online. Just commenting the same things over and over again. Sense the three. Mid. Coffee emoji. Wait till you hit the wall. Enjoy your cats and your dogs. You're gonna... Um, hold on. Is it... Is off the internet any more... Wait, normal anymore? Well, off the internet. Not off the internet. Like... Okay, there's a difference between watching Rhett and Link and being on TikTok and then literally being in specific spheres where you think all of your life is this bubble, right? So again, like I would say when I say like off the internet, I don't mean literally not using the internet, but I mean, you know, there's a difference between, you know, grow oh, I'm a millennial. Growing up, everyone was watching uh, Oprah. Normal people watched Oprah right? Okay. Normal people watched Oprah. If you were normal, you watched Oprah. That was just like the normal thing people watched. You know what I mean? If you didn't watch Oprah, that was like, oh, okay. You're not watching the thing that every O-mom, do you guys remember O-mom stickers of her book club on every van in America? Literally, I would see Oprah stickers all my whole life. I read every Oprah, Oprah reading list growing up. I read every book on her reading list. That's how I, I've read so many books off that reading list, like of all of them at some point in my life, right? So again, normies, the majority of people are still baby boomers and millennials to Gen Xers. Gen, Gen Z just started, kids. They just started off. They're barely people yet. You know what I mean? Cosmic says, bro, normies are mostly older people than younger generations, which comprises of a minority of the population are the ones who are terminally online. Exactly. Exactly. And so it's interesting. What's the coffee emoji? Oh, bitter. Well, it's like tea and coffee, but it's like a tea emoji. It's actually a teacup, technically. It looks more like a coffee mug, but it's supposed to be a tea mug for the tea. Die alone. And they always say this, especially to women whose opinions they disagree with. And they can't just say, I disagree with you. You're wrong. They always have to attack your appearance because apparently you need to be beautiful to have a valid opinion. And tied to that is this idea that you have to be beautiful to... Um, wait, I'd argue that these niche concepts should stay niche too. I think meeting in the middle and the healthy majority to have for society overall instead of he pays versus she, she's independent totalism. I agree. No, I agree. Like I think most people are are just like kind of doing what they think is normal. They're just talking about it. 
literally all my normie friends who don't like live online like I do they're just like oh I went out with a guy we just discussed who paid or like oh I didn't have any no one's having like this spoiled expectation unless you're in those specific bubbles you know what I mean like those gold digging bubbles or those very traditional religious bubbles like just like normal people are just kind of living their lives you know what I mean normies use the internet but only have snippets of the internet culture this does include millennials and gen z I agree yeah I agree why isn't she promoting comfort in your niche? What do you mean? Who? This girly girl? To be valid, period. If you are to be perceived by men. Anyway, I love reading These men books on the as internet. free therapy. And I Just some men. I highly recommend doing it because arming yourself with knowledge is the absolute best way to get rid of the BS that people are trying to project on you. Remember that people who hate themselves project their hate for themselves onto others. So if they call you ugly, it's because they feel like they are ugly and they need you to be ugly so they don't feel too bad about themselves. Any but also they don't think they're ugly, they think they're smarter than than you it's different they don't think you're ugly they probably don't even think they're ugly they think they're smarter than you and calling you ugly makes them feel bigger than you which is different anyway i share a lot of the stuff that i read on my weekly newsletter so if you want to get in on that go to manifestl.substack.com and put in your email so you can get my weekly newsletters like i share the weekly tea on there okay it's called the weekly manifest tea so you can get a weekly digest of what i'm reading and raving about with that being said I love reading as free therapy. So here's something that made me feel a lot better. Um, reading isn't therapy. She's using a lot of, ooh, her brand is not great to me. Is her brand unethical? Her brand is Spoiled Girly, girly Support Group. And I love reading for three, free therapy. But those two things aren't real. The support group is fake, which is fine. It's just like a niche. It's a brand. And I like reading for three, fair, three, Therapy isn't reading a book, right? So hold on. L.substack.com. She's selling what should, what sounds good, but isn't actually. And your email so you can get my weekly newsletters. Like I share the weekly tea on there, okay? It's called the weekly manifest tea. So you can get a weekly digest of what I'm reading and raving about. With that being said, I love reading as free therapy. So here. It's just like what people are saying. She doesn't mean literally, right? Like I always say, like BDSM isn't therapy, it's therapeutic. Live streams aren't therapy, it's therapeutic. Everything isn't therapy, it's therapeutic. You need to go to real therapy. Reading a book is therapeutic and it's helpful for philosophy, but it's not therapy. So I just want to make sure that's clear. I don't know if she's just doing it as a branding tool, but like therapy is different than reading a book, right? Here's something that made me feel a lot better about my experiences as a woman being on the receiving end of physical attacks from men and seeing other women be attacked by men based on their looks. You know what? It's never a good feeling. Even though you know you're pretty, even though you know you're good looking, even though you know you're not ugly, it's still not a good feeling hearing that I mean, from other people. So let me read this to you. A man's right to confer judgment on any woman's beauty while remaining himself unjudged is beyond scrutiny because it is thought of as God-given. That right has become so urgently important for male culture to exercise because it is the last unexamined right remaining intact from the old list of masculine privilege. Those that it was universally believed that God or nature or another absolute authority bestowed upon all men to exert over all women. As such, it is daily exercised more harshly in compensation for other rights over women and the other ways to control them now lost forever this quote shit that was really hard to follow with all the other things floating on screen i wish she had left the script up is from the beauty myth by naomi wolf okay and i highly recommend I this book. book it saddened me a lot but it also woke me up at the same time and here's my beef like with a lot of feminist writing and oh. all that stuff First of all, I used to be a hater. I really was. So being an academic in the hard sciences, in the physical sciences, I used to look down on the soft sciences, you know, the women's studies. I was a hater. I will admit it. But now that I'm grown and gained perspective, mm -hmm. I think it's underrated. But my one criticism or just comment, I mean, I really, really appreciate the book is what now? Okay, like what now? So this passage just explains that men being mean to women online. Like, first of all, this book was released like a long time ago. Like, when was this? Okay, I'll put the year here, but I know it's like from a while ago. And it still rings true to this day. Like, who could have predicted? 
predicted that even on new social media platforms such as TikTok, women would be experiencing the same. Everyone, though, it goes in cycles. Everything is just humans repeat history. History doesn't repeat itself. Humans repeat history. Physical appearance attacks that this book describes. Okay, who would have thunk? It's almost as if it's been happening for the longest time. Like I said, I love using reading as free therapy, and this quote just explains so much why. She means therapeutically, and I, I, I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. She doesn't literally mean as a replacement for therapy. She means just like to be helpful. And like are so said. obsessed with putting women down online, or should I say, putting women in their place, which is under men's thumb. Forever seeking male validation. Men's、mm. mean comments to women, especially about our appearance and fear mongering about our supposed loneliness.、Mm -hmm. You're gonna die old and alone with your cats and your dogs. Is yet another control tactic to exert their dominance, as if they hold authority to dictate what is beautiful. Because they actually do in a patriarchal society. And men's mean comments online reflect that because the online world reflects the real world. And here's the thing: like we already know that these things are happening, and this is why things are happening. But what now? And that's like my beef with a lot of whatever I'm reading. That's my beef: is what now? Like, okay, we're awake. What now? What happens when you being awake to、Oof. the ways in which you are disadvantaged in the world does not erase? You're being disadvantaged in the world. What now? And that's why the cornerstone of this support group、hmm. is: don't get mad, get paid. Because the more you wake up to these things, the more you want to get mad. And that getting mad period process it keeps you from getting paid. In this、hmm. example, we are aware of the beauty myth and. What even is the beauty myth? Okay, the beauty myth is an obsession with physical perfection that traps the modern woman in an endless spiral of hope, self-consciousness, and self-hatred as she tries to fulfill society's impossible definition of the flawless beauty. So、mm -hmm. now that we know what the beauty myth is, it's interesting too because it's like self. It's like she's right. So she popped a bubble, right? She popped a huge bubble, and now she's facing a different bubble, but she's still in the same overarching bubble. Okay, I love the like. Don't get mad. Get your bag or whatever. Like I'm into that. Get rich, whatever. Um, women's studies is a soft science. Yeah, I think anything psychology is a soft science to a lot of people. Um, which to be fair, it's a construct. Everything is okay. I am like I'm. Uh, ooh, uh, um, I have to hop into her bubble. But when I'm hop into her bubble, I think this is like a very important canon moment for a lot of people. To realize like the pressures of society in the bubble and what the bubble is telling you to do, right? All the bubbles say you're gonna die alone. I don't care if men die alone. I don't care if women die alone. I don't care if any of you die alone. What I care about is what does it mean to die alone? Because when people say you're gonna die alone, they're saying you're gonna die lonely, and that's different, right? Like you might die single, but you probably won't be alone. Statistically, women aren't. Women form friend groups and communities. Men very much struggle. To not die alone or lonely, men feel it in a really unique way compared to some women, and I think that's really interesting, but not really because most men aren't going out there and building their friend groups in the same way. They're not volunteering at churches in the same way. I mean, some do, but a lot of them end up staying home. And with video game addiction on the rise, I'm pretty sure men are going to have communities online, and I'm not sure that's going to be fulfilling enough for them. But I hope it is. Because look, you're not obligated to be partnered. I think it's okay to die with your cats and your dogs, and I don't want you to die lonely. But I do want you to know that it's okay to die single, right? There is no obligation you have to procreate or meet your soulmate in this lifetime. You have no obligation to do any of those things, right? But there is a loneliness to life, whether, like, no matter what bubble you're in, whether you're you're a boy or a girl. There is a loneliness, and there's a loneliness period we all feel. We have to have a relationship with our consciousness to understand that loneliness, right? Being lonely because you're not partnered has nothing to do with anyone else but yourself. You should not feel lonely because you're not partnered. It's okay to feel lonely on occasion to say like, "Oh, it'd be really nice to have somebody here and cuddle." That sounds great, but to feel so lonely that you don't even feel valuable or loved. Why are you seeking that validation by being partnered? Because groups like the Whatever Podcast or Fresh and Fit or certain bubbles literally teach you via construct that this is the only validation that means anything, which is ironic, right? Because these men are saying they don't need women, but they need them to feel like they're not going to die alone, right? You are valuable. What matters is your sense of character and how you live your life. You know, 
you really don't need to be partnered. You need to be fulfilled. You need to understand yourself. You need to be joyful. So I love that she's popped this bubble. I love that she's being self-aware in this way. I wonder if she'll pop more bubbles. I wonder if she'll realize like not even the patriarchy matters. I wonder if she'll realize like none of it matters. Even caring about the patriarchy is only for strategy, but it's not even that real. It's only a construct created by this generation. And then it will probably shift and maybe it will continue. But the patriarchy is a making of everyone's actions. Women help perpetuate the patriarchy. The patriarchy never would have worked without women. Like nothing in life works without group activity. So and we have validated it against our own experiences what now being awake to the beauty myth doesn't remove the real benefits that women get when we cater to the beauty myth. and men prettier men are treated better by society and women than ugly men what we perceive as ugly men do get treated worse by women she needs to have more balance in her narrative Women are just as cruel to ugly men as men are cruel to ugly women. Now, to be fair, I think women are genuinely kinder and consider less men ugly than men consider more women ugly. And yet those men will still date you and fuck you as women will date you and stay your mommy for a while. So again, I think the only slight difference maybe is that women don't mind dating boys that are equal... <sighs> ugly attractive level to the girls that the boys wouldn't date like guys say they'll fuck anything but they won't bring you around girls will bring around an ugly guy they just won't give the ugliest guys time of day and by the way again watch today's podcast you're not ugly you're just not introspective even ugliness and attractiveness is a construct listen to her saying these men are saying you're ugly they don't they don't know what's ugly you're not ugly you're beautiful what is beautiful who says you even know have the right to say what's beautiful you're still putting a qualifier on beauty. And I'm saying the consciousness is what's beautiful. I'm taking it a step further. It, on a scale of one to 10, all of us put in a room, yeah, we could definitely decide like who's hotter and who's not. You know, hot or not, let's go 2005. But in general, past that, even her construct of beauty, even her makeup and her eyebrows and her flawless skin and all that stuff, that performativeness she's giving right now in this moment, that's a construct. And she is uplifting the patriarchy with her, with her beauty standard alone, right? And I'm saying it's okay to do that. It's okay to be shallow. It's okay to do our makeup. It's okay to look pretty. It's okay to make an effort, okay? But all of it is still just because. Now, the reasoning has to be the why. I just, I just want people to know, like, you don't even have to do this. This is great. She popped a bubble. But what if you popped more bubbles, right? Like this is a great bubble to pop. Like men realizing like you don't need women's validation. You are valuable. Like men don't need to live for women's validation. You are not an awful person if you are unmarried. You are just living your best life, bro. Go live your life. Get a dog. Get a dog and name him Old Yeller. Okay? But don't do it because you're bitter. Don't do it because you're blaming women and men. Don't do it because you're like, I have to be single because these people aren't dateable. Just be like, oh man, I haven't found my soulmate yet. I meet all these like great or wonderful or not so wonderful people. And man, I just haven't found my soulmate yet. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to settle into a relationship and be grumpy and complain about your husbands and wives to all your friends? Auntie Brittany will not handle any complainers. No more complainers. You can vent. You can't complain. I don't want to hear it. The candle reflection in the window looks like eyes popping out in the darkness, Brittany. I purposely... Make it so the candles show in the window because I think it's fun. The disappointment of finding out horses were not as involved as you thought they were. Ho horses? Horses. Wait, I don't get it. Wait, I feel like this is something I should know. Is this a meme? I don't get it. Horses. Or the avoidance of penalization by catering to the beauty myth. We know it is a myth forced onto us to become our reality. We are awake to how we are being manipulated, but what does being awake to the manipulation do when this being awake, this awakening, doesn't stop the manipulation? And I think this is what's I love when people use like meditation language or introspection language, and then they're literally still talking about the patriarchy. Does nobody go to the macro? Of course they don't. I made the levels. I literally claim no one goes to the macro. <laughs> Look at 
look at me jumping down into the bubbles and being like, why doesn't anyone think about the macro? Oh my God. Oh, read my Ken comment. It's a Ken comment. Yes. Okay. The patriarchy. I get it. I get it. Good, good, good reference. Good reference. Oh, I love it. Okay. She's learning to play the game. How do you play the game within the bubble of the patriarchy that you were having so fun battling? And it's true. The patriarchy is widespread. It's like herpes. Everyone's got it. But also everyone's got it because we've all participated in it. So happening now and a lot of the girlies who have sort of had this feeling this whole time instead of getting mad about the beauty myth and how pervasive it is in our culture and how catering to it gives us tangible benefits we learn to be pretty catering to the beauty myth but in a capitalistic catering only to men with resources type of way that's why we all mm. try to avoid being broke man bait that's mm. why we are obsessed with old money aesthetic that's why we're obsessed with being classy being elegant we are turning the beauty myth around to benefit our i just feel like every time i look at myself i'm like she is definitely not talking to me <laughs> Selves instead of being a slave to it and a lot of people will say that well isn't catering to whatever systems already exist just perpetuate how much they have harmed us this and that we've tried everything okay we did we did the body positivity movement we did the <laughs> HAES we did like all these things F your beauty standards oh my god we, we were activists for 10 years we tried it's over give up <laughs> We already tried that way. How come we're not trying the other way? Okay. And honestly, I don't know. I don't know the solution. Okay. I just know what worked for me. When you are awake and making your movements rooted in reality and being market driven, you just do better for yourself. The less time we spend be being awake is being market driven. Fuck. Capitalism in this woman's veins, being bro. Being miserable and being angry. And the more time we get paid and profiting from whatever systems we This woman is such a capitalist. I love it. Live in. If a lot of women individually win, wouldn't that be a win for womanhood, period? I don't know. Just something to think about. A lot of the women who already have existing capital and status, you can afford to not cater to the beauty myth. It's so true. And I love that for them. But for women who do not have existing capital, capital and status we don't get the privilege of not catering hey 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 i beg to differ my bros bro 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 bros bros ugly women be popping off we're doing fine no oh my god this is so fun is this a joke she's fucking with us she's trying to sell merch bro we just got bamboozled we just got hoodwinked we just got yo yo we just got tricked she popped one bubble and was like, I'm awakened, I know, buy my merch. This was beautiful. P.S. Buy my merch. Links in the chat. Thank you. To the beauty myth. And that's just the reality. Because to be perceived as not beautiful is the same as not to be perceived at all. And Oh, damn. I think that's sad. But anyway. I mean, speak for yourself get here that got a little too deep anyway lots of thoughts from that one video of a man putting a woman down or should i say putting her in her place which is under his thumb and forever seeking his validation good for her for not caving in and uh, you know what the internet never ceases to amaze me long story short i just like how she's talking about being deep and then she's like make your money i went through this i had an ariana grande stage you guys remember this britney was anyone on the internet at this time i had a video that i made i used to have a show called thoughts for thoughts because I was like, I'm going to reclaim the name Thought, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I loved it. This was um, my two stage, but I was like a feminist. So I was like um, in my two bubble. I was like a hardcore feminist. I got out of a shitty relationship and I was like full on in my power. I was like, make your bag, make your money. Don't let anyone tell you to be poor. Like I was like full on in this narrative of like, uh, you know, I won't take out male validation, but I'll use male validation to like make me money or like I'll use female validation or gay validate. Like I'll validate, validate, val like you're seeking validation through money. This whole video is I'm seeking validation through money. That's what this whole video is. You remember Ariana Grande's song, the Seven Rings song? She's like, I want it. I got it. And everyone's like, this song's superficial. And it, it's so fun, though. Like, I don't even want to play it. Like, it's not fun. It's a good song. But also, it's all about money, which is fine if you want to play the capitalist game. But that is so funny to me because I forgot. Like, I remember. I feel like I made a video from my generation sort of similar but yeah, it's absolutely, she just sold her, like she's now seeking the validation of money basically and calling it independence, but she's making it off like women. The fact that you're serious, so unserious, 
I mean, you know, but I'm serious. Like, okay, this is so interesting to me. Like she's, huh? Yeah. I mean, good for her, right? Make your money girl. Like, you know, her subscribers are popping, her video popping, like make that money. But that is such a funny fucking sad dream she's selling right now. She's so shallow. She's selling the same fucking shallow shit that the whatever podcast is selling as well. And she's buying into it. She just told you, if you're ugly, you're invisible. Why does she believe that? I don't believe that. I think if you're ugly, it doesn't matter if you know how to play the game better. Who cares if you're ugly? So many of these men are ugly. They're doing fine. So many women who are ugly are secretly fine. Y'all just don't see them because they're busy making a bag secret. You don't have to use your looks to get ahead in the world as a woman or a man. You have to use your brain and your brain will teach you how to groom and that's good enough. Like, okay, like, sorry, I'm sorry. I feel like she's not playing in, she's not playing the right game or she's playing the game on the girlies because I don't believe it. You're not ugly. You're just not introspective. Okay. And like this girl doesn't have to play this game. She just doesn't have the introspection to know that. Whenever you see men being mean to women online, especially about the woman's physical appearance, just know that this is nothing new. She's kind of mean too. She literally just said ugly people are invisible. And it is yet another power move on these men's parts to control women. Don't give in to it. And the best thing we can do is get paid instead of getting mad and cater only to the systems that benefit us in ways that benefit us. Okay, and uh, for a lot of women, it is catering to the beauty myth in a capitalistic catering to only men with resources type of way. That's all I have for you today. I just wanted to let you know that you have so much inherent worth and value in a world that is held unless you're ugly and on devaluing you. Now get that bag, bestie. Yeah, she's selling you a capitalist dream, man. She would fit in with Fresh and Fit and all of those guys. What is she talking about? She's literally the metasphere, but for women. <laughs> She's literally the metasphere, but for women. She's literally the metasphere for women. I love it. Get that bag, bestie. Yeah, that's great. I love that. No problem. You know, like I'm into it. Like you do you, get your bag. Of course, make money, but make money for why? Why are you attached to making money? Right? What are we attached to? She's like so self-defeating in so many ways. That's why the men would attack women like this because they're fragile. No offense. Like, okay, literally. Like she pointed out so many reasons she has to play into men's game. She can't even be independent. A woman's sphere. That's it, Kay. Woman's sphere. That's it. That's what, that's what we just watched. No problem. We love a bubble. We're glad we watched it. You know? Yeah, says I'm behind, but the everyone dies alone thing. One of my favorite lyrics is no one makes it out. Of love alive, we either break up when we are young or we say goodbye when we die. <laughs> I love that. But no, literally, like, this girl's fine. I love her. Like, I hope El Ray, I hope she, like, kills it in the future. She's killing it now. Her channel's doing great. It's got great views. Holy shit. Um, great views. But, yeah, I don't know if this is the message we wanted. You know what I mean? Oh, these manifestations are funny, though. These comments are pretty funny. Um, never take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. Real men do not criticize women's looks. I feel like that's the wrong. I don't really understand what that sounds. I criticize people's looks all the time, right? It's not the criticism of people's looks. It's how and why, right? I love, uh, let's see. Uh, to be frank, it was really liberating to understand that attacks on my body were meant to humiliate and put me down. I'm a person with a soul, beautiful inside and out, and I deserve to be cherished. I mean, maybe. Because Boogie was screaming that he deserves an LA-10. I don't know why people think they deserve anything. You know? He's paying to call her ugly. That's why she's like, okay, I'm ugly. My Venmo is. That's fine. Um, if, she, if he is asking her to remove her makeup, he should shave his beard. I mean, that's pretty funny. They say beard is a man's makeup. I have not, guys. I haven't seen my husband without a beard. I have no idea what he looks like. I'm almost, I'm terrified. What if, what if I take him swimming and his beard comes off? You know what I mean? What if that happens? Real men don't exist. Well, that's just, don't be silly. Don't be silly. You know? Oh, I love the moral of her story. Get that bag ugly. <laughs> Literally 
it was like watching the authentic observer yesterday i was like yes 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 what and at the end she's literally like justin doesn't dress well jordan peterson does and i was like oh my god they both dress well depending if you're into the aesthetic oh my god like please please so her conclusion was that she wants to cater to the same beauty myth she was criticizing yes because at least she's gonna get her bag doing it people are such little conformists no problem i love it do that do that, do that. That's what I'm saying. The thing I am, okay, maybe she'll grow out of it. Maybe she won't. She doesn't need to. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good game to play. You know what I mean? Get the, make, do it. Um, We need to start responding to the enjoy being alone with cats and wine comments with enjoy being alone with your beer and porn addiction. That's what I'm saying. I don't, no one gives a fuck if you're lonely. Go be fucking lonely. I don't give a fuck if you die alone. Literally, you probably deserve it. Slash, it wasn't meant to be. Listen to me when I say this. You want to be introspective? If you're looking for love, the most love, the most incredible soulmate love, what are the probability that you, what's the probability you run into that person? And then you, when you do be grateful, what was the number, what's the number one criticism I get about my relationship when people find out that one, I'm monogamous and two, um, that I married him so quick. What if, what if you need time away from your partner? What if you um, miss other people. What if you want to sleep with other people, bitch? I did not just spend 34 years trying to find my fucking soulmate to go fucking have sex with some other hoe. Are you listening to yourself? I did not spend 34 years wondering when I was going to run into my soulmate to literally leave him for some, some other person, some other body. I'm sorry. Is there another soulmate walking into my life? And even then I didn't pick them. I picked this one. Because I believe in many, many, many soulmates. Right? I just can't believe people's narrative. This narrative is so cynical in the world. All men cheat. You'll never find your person. All people are in shitty relationships. Don't you feel trapped? Don't you feel suffocated by your husband? Oh, I'm sorry. Your marriage sucks. Okay? But speak for yourself. Okay? No, I do not feel suffocated in my marriage. Literally what? I was thinking about PewDiePie today because I was watching his video, cute video with his Babino and his and Marcia. And him and Marcia are alone like all the time. They're literally always together. And then they have a few friends in Japan they see on occasion, which is great. But nobody ever asks PewDiePie, do you ever want time away from Marcia? They have their lives. They live together in Japan with their baby and they spend a majority of their time together. Okay. Why in the world would I ever look at PewDiePie and Marcia and go, do you ever think you, like, you, do you guys ever wish to be with other people? That's like asking Cody and Kelsey, do you ever wish to be with other people? Better not. Cody and Kelsey are obviously soulmates. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? You literally see a couple that's obviously with their soulmate and you're like, but don't you want to be with other people? What? No. No. And if we did, we'd be Polly and we'd be with multiple soulmates at once. I can't believe it, man. You know what I mean? Maybe Brittany like suffocating her man. I mean, what are these tits for? Hello? Are you really ever alone if you get to live with yourself your whole life? I mean, if you don't have a relationship with your consciousness. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm needy. I like my people. And yes, if I lived literally alone, I'd probably live somewhere near somebody I knew so I could see them on occasion. But that doesn't mean I'd see them once a week. You know, I'd probably see them once a month or something. Even some of my friends, like I don't call them. I call them every like few months, maybe every six months I catch up with people or, you know, if they're like inner circle, um, maybe every three months or, well, it depends. Some of my friends I only talk to every like six months. But again, I would just, if I was literally single, I would probably live nearish a friend so I could see them at least once a month for sure. You know what I mean? Oh, they're, they're just trying to ask if you want to be swingers. No. That's why she has a big ass. True. To suffocate her husband. Facts. Peace and love to this woman. I get it. She's on the grind. I've been there. I've literally said this where I'm like, make your money, girl. Yes, yes, yes. But then be like Aang and the guru and let go of your attachment of money because it was never going to free you from the patriarchy anyways. What frees you from the patriarchy is meditation and introspection. True meditation and introspection. What is the patriarchy? It's a construct of a collective of people moving t together in like a, a, in a theme. And right now, according to these complaining man babies, it's dismantling. So 
Good job, ladies. You complained enough. But now they're giving up on it because it didn't move fast enough. Don't you love her? She's like, we tried the body or the body positive movement. Girl, that was like 10 years ago. Look at these lazy ass Gen Z activists. We've been fighting for 10 years. 10 years. And I'm like, okay. Great job, kids. 10 years. Wow. <laughs> Like it was a fool.